Right. So we're going to talk about own your own bank, and I'll be the speaker today. And uh, the re the need for becoming your own bank uh, developed in me when in in 2008 I started the group uh, called GIG G I G Generational Inheritance uh, Group, and that was about uh, how can you become the founding parent of your generational fund and become the next Maponya, Rupert, Oppenheimer, whatever. Because all of those families started with a founding parent way back with all the odds against him from a material point of view or a structural point of view, political point of view, but it didn't deter them. They went on and they became very successful families in their time. And then they moved on and their children followed and built on the basis that was given to them. And now three, four generations later, uh, they can now, we can now see the value of that family in the community because they are major contributors, not just to the local economy, but even to the world economy. So we said, if we want to move on to this journey, we have to own our own bank because the current banking structure is not friendly towards entrepreneurs. So uh, that started us off on a journey to say, how can you own your own bank? Now, for the sake of this talk, I'm going to use the bank of the name YOJ, which says your own group. So we're going to talk about a community bank, how you can own your own bank. And the structure of the community bank is called a cooperative financial institution. Now, there are three types of banks in South Africa. You have the commercial bank. So whenever we say the word bank, that's what comes up in people's mind. The upsize net bank, uh, of this world and uh, they all work on the banks act of 94 1990 but you need 250 million to start your application to become such a bank and then they will keep you busy with all sorts of uh, legal issues and it, uh, you will lose a lot of money because they actually don't want you in that space it's a space reserved for just a few people because that allows them to do fractional banking what does fractional banking mean it means that once you have that license, you don't really have to have any real intrinsic cash. You can use, if Stella wants to buy a car for 100,000, she must jump through all the hoops to show how she qualifies to pay back and have the income streams to pay back that money over the next three to six years. Then the bank takes that uh, application of Stella and say, we have an asset called Stella. And then the Reserve Bank says, good, because you have the license, you can now create credit, which is another word for virtual money, um, to the value of that. In, uh, and that's how credit starts circulating. And we all trust the digits that we pay each other, because fortunately for us in South Africa, it's still well controlled by the Reserve Bank and there's trust in the system. But without that trust, we can easily become the next Zimbabwe. Uh, these banks also own BankSurf, which is a switching mechanism so that the one bank can switch and pay digits to the next bank. And when you hear repo rate, that is what the banks, if they are short of cash, borrow from the reserve bank, and then they add figures to it. And if you're a very good customer, you pay prime, otherwise prime plus a certain percentage. The big thing a commercial bank is profit driven for the shareholders. And currently in South Africa, I think with the exception of F&B, uh, most banks are, well, there's now a few more that that's starting to come up, but they all got ties with overseas uh, 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 entities. So most of the money made through the banking is leaving our shores to, to pay overseas investors. But we have commercial banks. Another a type of bank in South Africa is called a mutual bank. And you need, well, it's the Mutual Banks Act 124 of 93. You need 30 million to start your application. You can potentially do fractional banking, um, which is uh, another step. It's also profit driven for the shareholders. Now we had a few, well, until two years ago, we also had VBS as a mutual bank, Vendor Building Society, started off honestly for the right reasons and then the politicians got their flaws into it and today it's no longer. Uh, the, the only other bank operating today uh, in the market is called Finbond. 
Now, the, the challenge with a, a, a mutual bank, because it's very difficult for them to move on to fractional banking, is that they now have to compete with the top banks and get real money from investors, which they then lend out at a higher rate. And that's pretty much the model that African bank used, in the, uh, used uh, get, attracting money from investors, but then that's cost of money. And uh, then your challenge is at the rate that you want to lend it out, who's gonna take it? So it's normally people that are already in trouble. But I still believe that there's a opportunity for mutual banks in South Africa, like we've had Som Sambo National. I believe it was one of the success stories way back but they became so successful that they cornered the whole market on housing and eventually the commercial banks made a plan to take them out. Operator Bank, that's a new kind of bank that came into being uh, Act 40 of 2007, which opens up the, the, uh, the, the, the floor for communities to organize themselves into micro banks. You still report to the Reserve Bank and we'll get to that just now but you need 100,000 shareholders capital to start the application. If you can get 200 active participants, that's it. Then you can start the process. It still takes you about 18 to 24 months. The big thing is you have to prove your common bond. So what is that that brings you together? So it could be we work for the same employer, we go to the same church, we live in the same neighborhood. Uh, so that's a common bond. But then for that common bond, you only get a local license uh, that's restricted to that common bond of that group. So if you want to have an, uh, a national bond, you need to uh, have a national uh, uh, reason to exist. And uh, today there are 28 CFIs, of which only three has a, a, a national bond. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, and the good news is we in the chamber has that national uh, license. We can't do fractional banking, which means we can only lend out money that is being put there by the depositors, which are the members of the group. The whole purpose of the cooperative bank is that it's membership benefit driven. So it's not so much to make money for a few shareholders, but it's to pass on benefits through to the members, which we'll uh, demonstrate just now. And you can only be a participant or a client if you're also a member, which means you're also a shareholder. And then another uh, signature thing of cooperative banks is even if one member has got a million shares and another one one share, there's only one vote per member per annum uh, at the AGM. Let's all talk a little bit more. So what's the structure of such a bank? So your own group, CFI, um, you are owned by the members. There's a board. So all of this is prescribed by the Bank Act. <coughs> and a, <coughs> a typical board will exist for, of about nine people, <coughs> three of which will go off every year, and, and, and a new three will, will be elected for a term of three years. Then the board is supported by committees, and there's a management committee, a credit committee, audit committee, and training committee. Each of these committees must have three members and one member goes off every year and the new member is elected for another three years. So it's a way of <coughs> to um, ensure succession planning, but also retention of knowledge. Now management, they're the ones who can sign off uh, and release money. Credit committee will be the ones that allow loans according to the mandate of the group. And then the audit committee is a check to <coughs> make sure that the credit, committee, uh, the credit committee and the management committee don't, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, go into collaboration and start jippoing the system and just give each other loans. So anyone with a complaint can raise it with the audit committee who has the power to invest. And if they find uh, a reason that these people were in cahoots, uh, they can be fired and a new board appointed or a new committee appointed. Training committee is then a committee that keeps educating the members on their benefits and privileges and the various products. Now, both the board, uh, of the board is, is responsible and accountable then to both the members once a year at the AGM and very regularly through various checks and balances and reports and audits to the Prudential Authority, which is a division of the South African Reserve Bank, just looking after CFIs. 
Now, if you want to start a new CFI, <clears throat> you can um, go through the process. If you have 100,000 to start <clears throat> and you've got uh, 200 active members and a common bond, that's fine. So you can start, but then you still have to then develop or purchase your banking software that uh, will not cost you less than a million. Set up administrative and management structures to comply with all the banking re regulations. That's another million plus. And then if you have all of that in place, the time delay before your CFI is licensed and ready to operate will take you 12 to 24 months. Or you can use what's already available in GIG, uh, and uh, they have an incubation program where the entity registers once off for 250 and 60 rand per month thereafter, and then they progress through three phases of growth, zero to 100 members, 100 to 200 members, 200 members plus, and they operate immediately as a CFI uh, under that license, and they have immediate access to the banking software, and at the end of the incubation period, when they reach 200 or more, they have the, the option to either register as an independent CFI or as a branded entity on the gig platform. Now, currently, the chamber is already one of these legal entities working towards having its own independent CFI, but not to delay the process, we've linked up with GIG incubations program. And as members, when you join the GIG, uh, the, 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 the Community Chamber of Commerce membership, and we'll just touch on it just now, immediately you will have access to the following CFI products for you and your family. And you can even use it in your business. So the first is what we call normal financial products, which is a savings account where you can bring lump sums and save it for six, 12 or 24 months at above market interest. The second product is for personal project. We call it the 32 day call account. And that's where you save towards a, a project or end of the year school fees and Christmas, or even just to have available if there's an emergency. While the money's in the bank, it's your money. You can access it with within 32 day call account, uh, 32 days notice, but while it lies there, you earn above market interest rates uh, comparable to the money market rates. Then we have sophisticated products that's immediately available to our investors, uh, to our members. And the first one is called an investor account. So it's almost our own internal crowdfunding mechanism. So you open up the account, the first 2000 Rand doesn't earn interest, that's just to activate your account, but day after you can have as much money in it as you want. But because you have money in it, even if it's one Rand, you're now a member of the investor club. And then we've got uh, our team of specialists who then uh, search the opportunities out there, and if they come across something in business and or property that's lucrative with a good, easy entry point and, a, and exit points, and all of that looks above, we then go back to the investor uh, of the investor club, give them the choice to participate, and then it's their prerogative to say, yes, I want to, or I don't want to. And at that stage, you then take the money out of your account and put it into this investment account uh, or in this investment deal. One deal that we currently have going for our members is every two months, like this coming uh, February 26, we have a, an arrangement with a cattle feedlot project, which has been going now for three years, where the uh, uh, average growth on capital that the company has achieved by buying calves, fatten them, slaughter them, sell the meat, and repeat the cycle in a 12-month period, has been able to give investors a growth of being between 10 to 15 percent, an average of 12 percent per annum. So uh, you put your money in as little as 500 rand, and then it's uh, it's uh, fixed for 12 months, but then you get it back plus growth. So that's available, and well, there's also no upper limit to how much you can invest. But then we have an exciting product that a lot of people don't know about. And if they know about it, they don't understand, but that's extremely powerful. It's called our loan link share, interest-free loan, up to three times gearing, up to seven years repayment. How does it work? So we have members who then choose to put money into their loan link 
a, a, a product and they put it at zero interest. So that's why we can now give zero interest loan because we receive the money at zero interest. So you have to then save for 12 months before you can borrow against your deposit. So your deposit now becomes the trigger. If a person has got a thousand in his deposit, he can borrow up to three times. If he has 10,000, he can borrow up to 30,000 uh, interest free. Now, because of COVID, when we enter that, the board just temporarily brought the three times gearing back down to two times gearing uh, until we see what's happening in the economy. But we, we have had uh, periods where it was at three times, but even at two times. Um, what then happened, your first loan is repayable over uh, the year, 12 months that you've been a member. Then once the loan is settled and repaid, and you can always uh, pay it off earlier, then immediately you qualify for another loan against what you have saved. So if you have saved more money by that time, that becomes the basis from which it, you qualify for a higher loan. But then future loans, we look at a repayment period of uh, up to seven years. If you've been a member for two years, you repay over two years, three years, and eventually seven years. And the way we're going with that, uh, eventually when we have thousands of members in the banks and hundreds of millions going, you could literally use this facility to pay off a house. So a house that would cost you uh, 20 years uh, at the net bank or a, a, an EPSA, uh, that same what you pay monthly would be your monthly repayment if you pay that back interest-free over seven years. So that's just how we can use it. So business people can use it to uh, use it for working capital or to buy equipment or however they want to move forward. How's it the benefit to you? The moment you become a member of the chamber, any of our basic standard or premium membership levels, you will automatically be part of this community bank and you will have access to all those pro products I've just mentioned, but then it's up to you how much you want to save in each of them. And uh, the chamber then pays your membership at GIG so that you can have that benefit. And then what other benefits are there at the various levels? And today I'm just focusing on the basic one. Well, you have the benefits of this uh, weekly business chat. There's the Zoom ID every Friday, 9 to 10, and please get the message out to your friends and colleagues, and they, they, they also join. And then because you're a member, you also have access to the Wisdoms chat happening every weekday from 8 to 8.30. There's the Zoom ID for that. And then the gig movement uh, is teaching people on all topics relating to um, generational wealth. So if you want to listen in on that every Sunday, nine to, uh, 1900 to 1940, we call it the Geek Club. There's the Zoom ID for that. And that uh, brings me to the end of this uh, introduction. And now we're going to open the floor for questions and answers. Uh, so any question from the floor? Yes, Patson. Open up. Yes, go ahead. Your mic is open. Hi, good morning. Good morning, uh, guys. Hope you are well. Thank you so much for the presentation, uh, uh, Jasper. Uh, regarding the gig incubation, uh, I didn't understand the how, how, how it goes. That's more to say that uh, if... So you're already a member of... Uh, the, the gig bank and you've got access to those products. But uh, yes. the incubation is, let's say for your security company and let's say you've got 200 plus staff and you want to, instead of them coming to you as the employer to borrow money, you want to start a community bank which they co-own and manage and because they are co-owners, they make sure they pay the money back and uh, the pressure is not on you as an employer. So it could be that kind of community bank, or it could be a large church group or uh, a stock fell. Then they come to GIG and they say, we want to start a community bank. 
but we don't want to wait 18 to 24 months for the normal licensing process. Then we can, because GIC already has a license, we can then bring them onto our license and that's called incubation. And then we say, depending on the size of your group, if your, if your membership can potentially be more than 200, but right now you're only 10 or 20 or 40, then that's fine, that puts you in phase one. And then in phase one, we say, you can use all the products of GIC, you've got all the access to all the in information and training, but you can still not brand and customize the whole thing for your new group. Uh, then as your group grows beyond 100 people, then we say now we can brand you and customize you as a private entity within GIC, still our license, but now you could even develop different financial products for your group, like a short-term loan or whatever products you have. So you operate as a full-fledged bank while you are, call it in training or in growth. And then um, once you have more than 200 people, then you comply with the law that says you can now register. And then we assist that group to register as their own CFI. So the incubation is not for members. The incubation is for entities that wants to eventually become a community bank. Okay. okay. I don't know if I confused you or explained it. No, no, no. I, no, I understand. And then when it comes to when it comes to loans, uh, like business loans, you do do. How does this work? Do you do, do business loans? How do they work? How much, uh, for instance, is is the maximum, and obviously the payment. Uh, the repayment. Not, what What do you mean, business launch? I'm not sure. Loan, loan. Oh, um, loan. Yes, uh, we don't give loans to businesses, but because you are in your own right the owner of that business, the the loan will be given to Petsa. Um, okay. Andy, uh, so depending on, let's say, on that interest-free loan. Uh, it, you first have to save some money against which you can borrow. Uh, and uh, so let's say you borrow, uh, you, you want to borrow 20,000 for instance, uh, or make it 30,000. How much would you then have to have? Uh, well, currently our, our gearing is two times. So if you want to borrow 20,000, you must have at least 10,000 Rand saved in that account then you qualify to borrow up to 20,000 interest-free. And then depending on how long you've been a member, uh, that, that then becomes your repayment period. Okay. And do, do know that there's a small admin fee uh, payable on every loan. That's how we can remunerate our staff uh, for doing the work they do in the back end. And there's also uh, an internal uh, provision for bad debt. So on the, let's say you want to borrow 20,000, 10,000 is actually your own money against which you borrow, but the other 10,000 belongs to the other members. So to protect the other members, we then ensure that other 10,000 by adding 3% of that 10,000 to your loan amount uh, so that we build up an internal uh, security pool, uh, or insurance pool in case something happened and you can no longer continue repaying it, we haven't eaten the capital of the people. Okay, okay. And then when it comes when it comes to when it comes to savings, uh, is this is, the, is this bank almost the same on 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 long term investment or on short term investment? How does how does it work? Can All can right, somebody so maybe bring? So, so when we talk investment, Geek uh, only has the two the, the savings products, which is a, a, a fixed savings for six or twelve or twenty four months. But then, if you become a member of the investment club or investment club, that then gives you access to outside opportunities that's not regulated by Geek. But our uh, our team then make sure that uh, we work with reputable uh, organisations. And some of them will give you an investment option of only 12 months. 
but I know some of them might even give you longer investment options and then it's your choice whether you want to invest or not uh, and then you must just look at what is the offer on the table. Okay, thank you. Um, Jasper? Yes. So I just want to, to uh, clarify that I understand it correctly. So if there is an entity that, that then joins the community bank, so they don't, they don't have access to the other funds. It's the, the loan amount that they have access to is dependent on how much they've saved and, over, and it's dependent on, on the term that they've been with the uh, um, community bank. Is that correct? Yes and no. Uh, any person, whether it's a, a new entity that's busy being incubated, they are full-fledged members of the, the big gig. Um, mm -hmm. So they have the benefit of an already established uh, funding pool and provided that they qualify uh, and the qualification is how much have they personally saved because they can only borrow against their personal savings as a measure. So any new person who comes in, whether he comes in privately through gig or through the community chamber or through another entity, but it's all part of the big gig group. Uh, then if he has saved 10,000, he qualifies after 12 months to borrow 20,000. Uh, so that's, the, the, that's the, the whole holding pool. But then as time goes on and then the group uh, has now grown to 100 plus members, then what we do internally, we're starting to ring fence that group so they still have access to the big pool, but when it comes to issuing loans, we transfer skills to say, okay, you know your members, is this person good for the loan or not? So we bring them in on the credit committee and the management committee and stuff like that. But throughout their incubation period, they have full benefit of what's already established. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, great. Um, this, uh, I see you are recording this um, session because I've invited somebody that, but unfortunately couldn't make it. So, um, but the, the recording is available. Um, yes, I'll, I'll send it out to the member shortly. Okay, great. Thank you. And right. then I'll also set up a meeting with you. Okay. All right, good. Any other, uh, so, so the purpose of uh, doing the angle from uh, a group point of view, you know, all of us mix with various groupings. So it could be a stock fell, could be a church group. And our vision is one day to have as many of these smaller CFIs out there as possible. Uh, and that will start giving us clout. Uh, there, there's a group, uh, if you want to uh, look them up, uh, what, what are they called? Uh, Ra Rabu, I think R-A-B-O, Rabo Bank. They, amongst the 10, uh, top 10 largest banks in the world, uh, but they completely based on this cooperative model. And they consist of many thousands of smaller CFIs that cooperate together, use the leverage that they can bring to the table. Uh, but they sailed through this crisis in 2008 when the big banks had to get government help to bail them out because they didn't have real money. They sailed through it and their members who lost their jobs had benefits from uh, job protection and companies that were part of that structure stayed open during the tough times uh, because that's all part of a member benefit program. So you just have so much flexibility in terms of the products and services that you can create for your members. Right, anyone else for a comment there, Rob? Please, uh, Jasper. Any affiliation to COSAB or whatever it's called now, the Banking Council of South Africa, who actually are influenced to a large degree, um, not open information um, by the banks, because the banks typically appoint the person running uh, COSAB or the Banking Council of South Africa. So is there any, does the community bank, does GIG fall under those, the auspices of that organization or not? No, uh, a cooperative or a, or a community, community bank uh, within Reserve Bank, they've got it. 
prudential authority. Um, so they look after all the uh, all the entities that after this Bank Act and make sure that they comply with that. Uh, so uh, there's no other association that we be, need to belong to. Uh, then there's another one because we're we giving credit. We also have to belong to the uh, uh, NCR National Credit Regulator. Uh, so those are the uh, licenses that uh, regulates us. But uh, yes, that that that's the only uh, official bodies that we need to belong to. Um, the selection of the cattle feed program. Um, how do you go about doing that? Um, who, who decides? How do you decide uh, what criteria are used, etc.? About cattle feed or investment opportunities as a, as a whole? <coughs> well, that as an example, how did you go about selecting that company? And is that. Uh, oh, I think it's just that because of uh, my other colleague, uh, Gavin, who is the head of our institute, so people know about us. So we the first port of call. If someone thinks they have an idea and they now know that we are looking for opportunities, they would then uh, talk to us. And we do observe many opportunities on a weekly basis, but you know, you have to look at a hundred to find one that is, is a really good one that's really looking. And uh, how I got uh, how I got to uh, the the cattle feed lot was uh, I know uh, the, the father of the guy who is actually operating together with a colleague of him, the cattle feedlot. Uh, I didn't know the owners of the cattle feedlot project, but I know the father and he then said, you should talk to my son, they have this product or project. And then I did my own just investigation and then I uh, had meetings with the owners of the feedlot and I looked at there's uh, results for the last three years, and the owners are both ex investment uh, invest tech, uh, investment managers who then left and started their own business and then teamed up with a 12J company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so they had the results, and what uh, appealed to us was first of all it was well controlled. They they in turn have teamed up uh, with professional feedlot managers with uh, risk mitigation programs like uh, the, uh, the, the service level agreement ensure that the feedlot uh, professional service providers uh, ensure that there will no, be no mortality higher than 1%. So it becomes a very well regulated uh, business plan. Uh, and then looking at the results, the fact that they then open it up that you can invest as little as 500 Rand as a private investor and they come and, and they allow you to invest every two months. That then made it uh, one of the projects we could recommend to our group. Uh, and so just as a rough rule of thumb, anything that can give the group uh, our, our yardstick is how close to 12% or plus can we bring uh, alternative investments uh, to the group so that capital is protected, but but uh, you know historically they have achieved these kind of investments. And then meat is a Easy product, we all want to eat, and if meat prices go up, we just pay more. But it's a, it's not a, a what do you call it, exotic product that if the market turns, then they leave luxury goods. This is a consumable good. So that's the kind of thing we look at. And then in time, if we have enough investors, we will certainly also look at how to co-own property. Uh, so, uh, so, so anything in business and or property, we'll, we will look at. Thank you. Right. Next question. Um, Stella. Uh, can you tell me for the last couple of years that you've had the bank where you've actually um, borrowed some money to people, what is the de a bad debt that um, the bank has incurred so far? Now, that's a very good question. And thanks for that question. Uh, the norm out there there and it includes the Capitex and the upsells of this world you can doesn't matter how long you've had your license but if you exceed a bad debt ratio of five percent so in other words your bad debt book unenable debt is more than five percent that's it they close you down because it becomes a risk they would 
because they just didn't have good information. VBS were not honest. They didn't know that the debt was so bad at that stage. So they would have been closed earlier. Now that's very tough. I tell you what, companies like Capitec, uh, which is mostly in the borrow, uh, lend, lending business, uh, they get past this 5% thing uh, because they do have bad debt. But they get past it because they grow their book faster than the bad debt can grow. Now, we are fortunate in the last, uh, we've been operating since 2012 as a bank. And, and although we only got our official license in 2015, we operated as a loans and savings club. But let's take it from 2015 when we operated officially. Um, because of the nature of the people that we bring in. So the people don't just come in because they're desperate for a loan. They come in because they're serious business people or serious people about their legacy. And in the ongoing training we provide, we've been blessed that in the last four years, uh, we had a zero bad debt, which is unheard of in this market. Wow. So that's where we stand. That is excellent. Well done, Jasper. Thank you. And, and your team. Right, let's hear from Trevor. What you're thinking on this? You've walked much of this road with me in the past three years. Uh, any comment or input you want to give? That looks like he's. Yeah. Yes. Don't catch me unawares. Yeah, so Trevor, I was just asking, I don't know how much you followed of the conversation, but. Uh, Listening in. Yep. A decision maker to bring the, the bank, community bank on board for the chamber. Uh, and what, what about it uh, motivated you to say our members need it and how they should use it going forward and any other comment that you might have? Um, my, my comment is uh, based on my past 12 months experience uh, through COVID-19. Uh, and I must say, I'm absolutely mystified um, why it is that people do not jump onto quality opportunities. Um, so, you know, when you actually turn around and say, hey, you know what, over a period of seven years, you can actually pay off your, uh, your home mortgage uh, uh, utilizing the interest-free facility here. Um, there are one or two things go through my mind. Um, is it being packaged incorrectly? Uh, are, we, uh, are we missing out on what is the sizzle um, marketing or promotion uh, drive to get thousands of people on board here? Um, and, and I'm just reminded of uh, the core group of people at the chamber who actually sat down together at the start of COVID-19 and said, okay, well, what now? Uh, what the problems in our network? And Dawn came up and said, listen, the problems in our network is, is that our industry has completely collapsed. And that within 21 days, we designed the virtual trade fair dot Africa, which became virtual trade fair dot global. Uh, Wisdoms at the same time were busy putting a $1 a month program out to a million people. And it just made us uh, push it out a lot faster. Um, and then that all transpired into the end of the year program where uh, Ivan Anderson, as a result of all of his experience that he put together, was asked um, to actually bring in a component of wisdoms and uh, with Dawn and with Lee uh, set up the foundation of the BBX UK um, event project, which uh, now reaches 90,000 to 120,000 odd businesses. Um, and and uh, I think at last count, uh, we built up a value trade credit in BBX UK uh, of something like over 50,000 pounds for, uh, for four weeks of work that Ivan and Lee uh, effectively put in. Um, and I just wonder where, you know, what is it that you've got to do um, to get people excited about making things happen? 
uh, because this chamber and what you're doing here, Jasper, and the amount of work you've put behind here is absolutely incredible. Uh, so I'm just continually mystified as to what it is um, that will take South Africans um, into coming into this thing in huge numbers. And just to give you an indication, uh, I watched this MTI scam where people, South Africans, were talked into putting 21,000 Bitcoin uh, into a, a concept that was really just a, a Ponzi scheme um, where the guy ran off with everything, but uh, the numbers were something like 260,000 South Africans jumped into that. Um, so my criticism of you, Jasper, is that you're not making this thing look uh, appealing enough to all the greedy South Africans there um, so that we can help save their money instead of they actually uh, lose it. Uh, but I think it's a conundrum. Um, how do you package great looking products that have a high degree of safety with very smart long term foundational principles behind them um, and package them to excite people to get involved. Uh, so that's a conundrum that I'm working on all the time. Uh, and perhaps looking at Patson down there, um, you know, I don't know how many independent or, uh, companies that Patson has. Uh, how do you work with a guy like Patson uh, to turn around and say, well, uh, how do I add what is offered by um, the, this particular investment bank, build it into a product offer um, and offer it to Patson's target market clients, whether they be corporates um, or small business enterprises or homeowners. Um, how do you take what are the major benefits here add them alongside other people's product offers and give them a certain amount of security um, tapped into their own product. Uh, and, and if I can just add on to that, our wisdoms uh, when we developed last year this $1 a month product, uh, product um, people were turning around to us and saying, but $1 a month, what, what can you get? What wisdoms can you get? Well, in fact, we packaged over $1,000 of value, way over $1,000 of value into this $1 a month product. Uh, and while people were turning around saying, what the hell are you doing? We signed up a deal, uh, which is effectively 160,000 people. They pay us um, half of that now to deliver this product. And it's in pounds um, on a monthly basis to their particular network. And they're looking to grow their network to 250,000 strong. There are amazing things you can do when you work together with other individuals. So, um, you know, my, you heard of my gyroscopic mind. It goes all over the place. I'm, I'm trying to work out how we can take quality and operate at scale, not just with a few people. Thanks, David. And I think just to uh, the, the few comments that you threw out there about MTI and 260,000 greedy people, that is exactly not the market that you want. But the, the question is, how do we reach the other market? Or how do we grow the market that we want? And I think the key word there is financial literacy and teaching people uh, how to understand and appreciate the power of investment. But that's a long-term project. So the, the, the next trick is then how do we make it fun while people go through that process? And how do we give them self-worth? So, uh, and then you referred to Patson and, and that reminded me of a question I want to ask Patson. So Patson, open up your mic. I want to talk to you. Uh, so right now, how many permanent employees do you have? Just uh, unmute yourself, Patson. Yes, Jasper, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. On the, on the permanent basis, I was just looking at our UAF thing now um, at 64. Now, um, when when's one of your staff uh, have a death in the family? I see the... the, the come again? 
when you have a when when one of the staff have a death in the the family, uh, what sort of problems spill over into the work? Do they often come to you for a loan? You, you mean on the on the on the staff? Usually they they do not, but if if specifically it's a dependent or, or, or of one of the staff. Our, our provident fund that is uh, the, the national for the security sector obviously covers that. Um, in terms of the loans, at times what we, 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 we have done within the business is we have done something that we call it an advance. Uh, usually, usually we give them on the 15th when somebody is having a problem. We, we give them an advance and we limited that to to a thousand obviously depending on on, on on what their problems are and then obviously when when we are doing their salaries for that for that uh, particular month then we, we we take it back so just something that you can keep in mind so i've just uh, mentioned to you uh, very broadly the kind of products that we have but uh, membership of the bank also has a funeral scheme portion. And the funeral okay. says that a member of the bank, uh, and that's then a member who pays 120 rand a month, have access to all the various products, even the interest-free loans, but they also have funeral cover to the value of 30,000 rand for the husband and spouse. And then for adult children uh, or, uh, from 13 up to 21 years, 20,000. For junior children, okay. six, uh, six years to 13, uh, 7,500. And children younger than uh, five years, uh, 3,000. And that's under okay. a large insurance company. But then the benefit is uh, it's, a, it's for, for the little money people then pay for the membership. It's a, bar, uh, a big, big value in terms of funeral cover. So I don't know if you let's say your, I don't know what your current provident fund pays out uh, if, if people have a funeral claim. But uh, I know that the, th the, the current 30,000 is, is one of the biggest in the market. And that, that could make people want to stay with your company and make a better service if that could be added to their benefit program. And then without you having to interfere, they have access to the financial literacy training, and they can learn how to start saving for themselves against which they can do interest-free loans. So that's the kind of collaboration I see with lots of companies and entities going forward. So does that sound like something we should explore offline? It sounds good. It sounds good. I will just have to, to, to double check with, with, with our Provident Fund, obviously, on the benefits that they are getting, how, how, how um, it is the amounts and the like. Then we can, we can take it from there. All right. Uh, thanks for that input, Trevor and Petson. Uh, right. Any other comments uh, just going down the line? Uh, Rob, from what you've heard, and you, what applications do you see uh, in your circle of friends, uh, to bring more people on board uh, with with the chamber, so that we can grow our community bank and do more things. I haven't thought of that, but uh, Trevor's uh, comments actually uh, resonated in terms of that uh, sizzle factor. The sizzle factor associated with the community bank, that, to, from my perspective, isn't there. <clears throat> and uh, is it worth getting a branding expert in if you haven't already and said, how do we actually uh, create some more brand awareness if that's what you want to do? Um, just thinking off the cuff, there are a couple of things that I mean, I'm sure that a collective mindset would all come together and put some ideas on the table and uh, not that you haven't had the ideas yourself. But uh, maybe just, you know, third party ideas, if you want to call it that. And uh, just thinking about, so would you be happy to get onto a program, the Derek Watts uh, program? Would you be happy to get onto a radio program and, 
and talk to uh, this fantastic product that, or that you've, you've built. I don't think you're doing it justice. Well, thank you, and that's valid uh, uh, comment there. And uh, the, ans the short answer is, uh, whoever feels uh, this is a great product and it needs to be made known to the market, and they have the connections with the likes of Derek Watson, other radio programs. So we've already been on, and next week you'll meet one of our uh, members, uh, Steve from Platinum Gold Radio, uh, and we have last year on several of his programs on this product. Uh, and uh, I've been on some of the, uh, uh, the different uh, radio stations and, and I've had also a recording for SABC2 uh, for a five minute in uh, input. Uh, but it's, it's an ongoing sharing of the message because I think the sad reality is there are not enough uh, sophisticated uh, financially literate thinkers out there and if you if you programmed and primed for what will make you rich quickly okay then already we have a problem but when when people need to learn and understand that, then it uh, takes a bit more time uh, yeah so thanks Rob for that uh, comment any I think just yeah. Would it be a benefit, for, I mean, for you to set up a just a brainstorming session on what to do? Um, you know, put a program together based on what the output of that is that's a, a supplementary or complementary to what you have already. Just to I'm open you. for it. So, if you've, are you suggesting a uh, with yourself? Well, and, and other people that are interested or have the branding expertise and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I, know a few people, I know a few people in the branding market that would probably happily participate in something like that in order to, uh, if nothing else, promote themselves. All right, I'll contact you then offline and just hear what is it that you vote and then, uh, if need be, we open it up as a, a, a session to the whole group, whoever wants to participate and we take it from there. Cool. Closing session, a uh, comment from you, Sarah? Ach, Stella? No, just a thank you so much for the presentation. It was great just to be reminded of everything. And um, I would like to set up a session with you. Um, I've got a few ideas around, not ideas, I've got a few people that um, would be very interested in this. And maybe we can have a separate meeting where you can present again. But thank you. Thanks, Stella. Trevor, closing comment from you. Leave me alone, Jasper. I'm working in the background, man. Listen, I'm reminded, uh, I'm reminded, and this is um, with really the best of intentions, but a comment that Dan Kennedy once said, he's a marketing specialist, and this is where I back up Rob. Um, he actually turned around and said, you know what, you can have the greatest product in the world and still starve. Um, and it's all about branding, promotion, marketing, and all that sort of thing. So I think uh, Rob's offer to actually uh, sit down with you is phenomenal. Uh, there needs to be more and more inputs in here. Uh, and uh, really, I just want to tie into uh, the grouping, the small group of people that got together last year out of the chamber and made things happen. Um, why can't it be a big group of people make even bigger things happen? It's just, a, uh, you know, it's a function of numbers. Um, so uh, I'd love to see what comes out of uh, Rob and yourself getting together and um, brainstorming some ideas. And also what, what Rob said is there are many, many people would just love to attach their names to the development of the next biggest, greatest brand uh, to happen in the country out of a period of chaos and crisis. So, and they'll do it for free. All right. Thanks, Ted. Back, back to your drawing board where you do all sorts of things. And uh, Petson, you, you can have honor of meeting for us, uh, or I'll just have one more thing to say after you. But uh, so your comment on today and 
how it could be of benefit to other people. That's it. Hi, Jasper, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, Jasper, thank you so, so much uh, for the presentation. It was, it was actually uh, beneficial and I've taken, I've taken down again some of the notes, but I think taking this further, I'll, I'll need to meet you one-on-one -on -one and see obviously how I can uh, introduce this to, to, to our employees, how I can introduce this to some uh, small enterprises and again also to, to, to some of the clients who might uh, also be interested on this. But yeah, the information, I think it was quite good, although I, I'm still having quite a number of questions which, which might take us uh, longer for this session, but we'll make a plan one-on-one -on -one and see how we can, we can take it broadly. Uh, to some to some clients who might be interested. Thanks, guys. And then, uh, <clears throat> in closing, just again a reminder: see how many of your people you can get uh, to join us next Friday. Uh, Steve has done us a tremendous favor uh, with this virtual trade fest that uh, Trevor talks about last year, and he put us onto his radio station, which broadcasts and effectively reach one and a half million people. Uh, of which 30% are international people. And uh, so he's now a, a, a strategic partner to the community chamber. And he's going to just share with us uh, in as an opening session, is radio still relevant in our time today? Uh, so that will be the introduction session and then we can comment and take it from there. But uh, please come and let's support him. He's done us a great uh, favor last year. So spread the word. And let's give him a good audience. So for the rest of you, like I then have individual meetings lined up with all three of you, Patson, Stella, Rob. I'll get that going from my side uh, sometime next week. Uh, and then we'll take it from there and have a blessed uh, week and successful. And we'll see you next Friday. Same time, different topic.